Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Our guest today is my friend Darren Hart. Darren is a spiritual medium who runs Barnum Spiritual Center in the UK. And I'm not sure if I first met Darren at the Arthur Finley College in Stansted or Banyan Retreat in Ashford, but because of his kind, caring, and fun personality and his fantastic smile, I wanted to introduce him to you today. So Darren Hart, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you very much, Sandra. That's the shame can't see my beautiful smile but they can hear my lovely voice <laughs> you're so um, funny I, I can't remember where it was we first met that seems to be a little bit vague to me as well but i just know that it was so, it, it, one of them two anyway but um we just clicked on straight away um you know beautiful personalities great souls matched together and that's how i see it so you know you've always been part of my life since that Aww. day haven't you? yeah i feel the same way i remember seeing you in the back of um Somewhere in the at the college, and I thought, oh, who's this nice man? And smiling, and then there you were at Banyan, and I thought, oh, and so it's just been private really... investigator. He could have been, yeah, <laughs> no, just just been really nice, and uh, yeah, I just thought it was time to talk to yeah. you on the show. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about you. Where does your story start? Are you somebody who's always been involved in mediumship, or yeah, if you don't mind. Not at all, Sandra. It'd be a pleasure. Um, well, my sort of journey starts really um, that since I was younger, I've always had this um, awareness, as we can call it, mm-hmm. um, of another world. At the time when I was younger, I didn't quite realize it was a spirit world because I didn't have that education with inside of me uh, to, to identify it. But I just knew that uh, that I wasn't alone in this world. Um and as I started to grow up within my life, I just had this awareness around me that I was different, completely different. I seem to have known things, not premonitions, but I sort of have a feeling that something was um, within a situation, something was going to happen. So I had that type of feeling and uh, and I just knew that when I would be walking around in different areas, um, that I'd have this sense it's on some occasions that I would have somebody around me. Um, and I just felt that I wasn't alone. It was like a blanket that used to come around me. That's the feeling that I used to get. Um, but I didn't know it was like a spirit world. Um, now, I know within my mum's side of the family that my mum was very, very, she has a great psychic intuition. She can see somebody and tell you exactly what they're like straight away. Mm-hmm. And 99% of the time, she was completely and utterly right. And she would always say to me, son, keep away from him or stay away from her and guide me in that way. And I think, well, how come? Why? And it as time moved on, you would see, you know, the, 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 um, the experience of it would come to me. And I think, yeah, mum was right all the way through there. So she always had this type of um, intuition, psychic intuition. And uh, and I believe it comes from my mum's mum as well, because she used to do the tea leaves and do various other little bits and pieces as well. And a great judge of character. Hmm. She really, really was. She would be able to say, keep away from them as well and uh and people would go to see my mum about advice and my grandma and and they would get this sense of advice because if you ask them something it's like as if they always knew the answer for some way they would never say well i don't know about that so it's like as if that they had this type of inspiration from the spirit world that used to work through them in a way of guidance in this world so i knew that i had this type of um awareness of another world that was around me at that time and as i started to move through my life um you know it's just like a lot of mediums you know we've never a lot of us haven't lived um a, a perfect life you know my life hasn't always been perfect right. um in many ups and downs through through you know throughout my life really um and and as i say many ups and downs there's been some low points as well very low points and some high points um but as I've gone through my life, it's like as if um, how I can describe it is as if that it was like as if I I had that type of life planned out for me, so to speak. And I had to walk through it and and experience it in the in the way that I could in order to try and gather the type of um, wisdom and the knowledge that would come from it all in order to enrich my soul with everyday type of life. Um, so as I started to walk through my life in that way, I would come across certain situations. And uh, and as I come across them, I just had this sense that it, everything came out all right at the end of it. Uh, but I'd, it, I'd have that experience of that situation. Uh, and some of the situations, you know, um, you know, they, they weren't always the best situations. Um, but I still sort of seem to come out of it. But I have that that knowledge and the experience of that type of situation 
in my mind and in my soul at the same time. As I got a bit older, um, I just, you know, I just knew that I was um, different. And I had this type of psychic intuition as well, where I would say to myself, hang on, you know, this sort of situation, I've got to remove myself from there because that's not quite right. Uh, and I don't really, um, you know, go very well within their energy. And I could always have a sense around areas that um, something wasn't quite right. You know, I could walk into a room and think, don't like it in here. I've got to get out of here. And I'd have this type of um, moments before something would happen that I'd have a sense that it would happen. Um, it's quite hard to explain. But I just knew that there was that I was different to other people. I really, really did. Um, and as I started to walk through my life even more, then I had this awareness that death around me was not the finalization. It was as if that I had a, a knowledge that was enriched within my soul that um, there was something different or that wasn't the end. And I suppose with all this type of experience and all this knowledge that was coming in, it really sort of said to me, hang on, there's something totally different here. And this isn't the final place where we are. As I moved into my life um, a little bit further on, I then started to have an awareness of um, people that I would see. And these people would sort of come into my vision at certain points. And I would think, well, who are you and how did you get in there? Um, but they would come in within my mind's eye. I wouldn't see them physically within my eyes. I would see them within my mind's eye. And uh, then I would just have this adjustment. So it wasn't like as if it was something that was coming out the ordinary. It was just like as if it was just being part of an unfoldment, so to speak, within my awareness of the spirit world. Um, and that's basically how I started to move into mediumship and, and within the spiritual aspect of it all. Um, and, and then as I started to move forward with it all, more and more awareness of the spirit world started to come around me. Um, and and I just I had this um, I had this great uh, feeling of knowledge about a different world that it was there was something completely different to here, but part of here, so to speak. So that's how I started to move forward within my mediumship in that way. That sounds extraordinary. And I love the word unfoldment. Yes, that's because that's what it is, because mediumship to me is. It's not something that you learn. Mediumship is who you are. It becomes from your soul. Um, this is how mediumship is in, in, in my knowledge of it. Um, you know, I know that everybody's got a, a psychic ability and we've all spirit and we mm -hmm. have this spiritual yeah. awareness around us. Um, and, you know, everybody can be a, a, a medium. But how I see it is, is that as we move forward within our life, it starts to unfold this soul that we have and the gatherings of the knowledge and the wisdom that we've enriched within our soul as we've walked through our life. And then it starts to unfold what we class as mediumship. Now, as I see it, um, you know, the, the spirit world is all around us. It's not somewhere where it's up in the sky or over mm -hmm. there. It's, it's the essence of this world. And what we do is we come to this world to have an experience of this world in a materialistic, physical form. So as we come down, we come down as the purest of souls. We go through our life, but we come down with the, the, uh, the whole enrichment of love. So we step into this world with love. That's how we come into it. And then as we walk through it, um, you know, our, our souls become more tarnished with the physical form of life and, uh, and the ups and downs. But as we walk through it, we have experiences that we can have a, a share of the feeling of love. We can have the, the feeling of hurt, pain. Um, and, and all them types of um, emotions that we have this experience of. And as we go through it, them experiences enrich us and they become who we are. And if we go through this world in a certain way that um, we can um, enrich our souls and not let it tarnish them or damage our souls in any way, then that becomes the education and the education of the spiritual aspect of who we are as a person. And that's where our mediumship starts to unfold. And, and as it starts to unfold, it's not like driving a car where you learn it and learn it and learn it. Right. It becomes of a multitude of love. Now, that love comes from within the spirit world and it blends within your love. And, and, and how they both enrich each other is through the purity of unconditional love. Now, when you have that aspect, then you have the beginnings and the foundations for, for beautiful communication from the spirit world. If you haven't got that in there, 
then the communication becomes more of a distance and it doesn't become so much of the purity. You know, you will get types of information, but the more that you blend and accept the love between you and the spirit world and enrich that, that's where the communication becomes more powerful and it becomes the voice of who you are and the spirit world and they can then communicate to this world in that way. When you sit with someone, Darren, do you actually tap into a feeling of love before you start doing a reading? Yes, how I, how I do it um, is quite hard to explain. but um, Give it a try. <laughs> well, the, the spirit world, how they work within me and how I work is, is that if I'm going to do a communication, I will then start to raise my soul to the spirit world. And how I lift it is I lift it in love. And I just touch out for the awareness and say to the spirit world, here I am. If you wish to communicate through me, then please do so. I have no expectations. I have no demands and no needs. Let me just purely blend with you in the love that we can create together. And let's just see if we can have communication. And that's where the communication begins to start. I have the feeling as the spirit world start to draw close to me, I have that beautiful feeling of love wrapping around me. And it's just the energy of it. And that's when I know that when that whole sense of love comes forward, then the communication will be there. If that's not there, I don't seem to get that type of communication. So for me, preparation is where I would work the best. Um, if I sit and um, and I just literally, because I sit in the power every day, so I just literally just open my heart, open my mind and say to the spirit world, here I am. And they come and they blend with me. And that's when that that type of blending is when it enriches the communication. And that's when it starts to enrich um, where you where you have this beautiful connection to each other. And it's like as if you, you, you know, if you meet somebody, um, you don't put your arms around them and love them straight away. That comes within time. Right. And that's the same within the spirit world, you know. Um, you, you know, the more that you blend with them and, and the more that you sit with an open heart and an open mind, that's when the blending starts to really start take place. And, and that's when they can put their arms around you and, uh, and and you can bring that voice forward to this world. It's, it's beautiful. It's a lovely, lovely feeling. It really, really is. That feeling sounds incredible. And I might have got a little bit of it last week. I, um, if you don't mind, I'll share the story I told you oh. just before we started recording. But... For our listener doesn't know this, I spent last week at Banyan Retreat in Ashford in the UK, and one of the exercises we did was to uh, try doing uh, blending and doing a medium reading for our partner. And over the course of the years, Darren, I've dabbled in this a little bit, but fear has always stopped me from continuing on. I have this worry that somebody's really looking for evidence of their loved one, and then I won't be able to deliver it, and it will just be bad. So anyways, at this particular time, though, I thought, you know, I've got nothing to lose by trying. And so um, I just imagined that this woman that I was working with, I didn't know her well at all, and I just imagined uh, loving her, you know, just loving her. And just mm. asked if there's anyone that wanted to come through me for a message for her, having no idea, no expectation, no nothing. And what immediately came into my mind's eye and filled my heart with love was the relationship I had with my grandmother, which was so special. We were like best friends as opposed to granddaughter and grandmother. I mean, we were so close. So I naturally just thought that well maybe this is her grandmother and she had the same kind of relationship and I I shared that and I shared about a two small dogs one was a black and white dog and one was a small um, like white poodle and I saw a sewing machine in my mind's eye with a on gold it said singer on it and um, several other details and my partner was great because she didn't say yes or no she just was taking notes and she says what else what else so there was no worry about uh, me being wrong and, and shutting down the flow of information and and at the end I saw a little uh, vase with some flowers and she said what kind of flowers and I said oh I see roses and lilies and then she started going through the notes and sure enough she had the same kind of relationship I had with my grandmother and again I was so filled with that love um, mm. she had those two little dogs the grandmother did 
got all kinds of other details correct about her home and some things about her life. And then she says her last name was Singer. And she, her grandmother used to say, my name is Singer, like the sewing machine. And which just blew my mind, you know, had those two dogs. And then at the end, she said, it's interesting that you saw roses and lilies because she says my two grandmother's names were Rose and Lily. And so I jumped out of my chair and went, woohoo, you know, and then I started to cry because I didn't, I didn't know, I don't want to say that it was easy, but it was something where I didn't have any expectations. I just filled my heart with love and then I just shared with what was there. Yeah. Oh, but that feeling of love wrapping around me was, I think, what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's why it worked for you. Um, you know, if if you sit within, you know, the nakedness of uh, of your soul and just allow your heart just to fill with the love, and as the spirit world just um, bring themselves closer to you, they bring that love with them. You have to have the love in the beginning because otherwise you'll have a mixed match. And when you have two compatible loves, they just want to blend together. That's when the natural occurrence of communication will take place. If you're sitting there with a demand and a wanting and a need or even a negative thought to say this isn't working or what you're doing is you're inhibiting a natural occurrence between two spiritual people um, and two spiritual beings, because that's what we are. When we're in the spirit world, we're completely spiritual. How we con- uh, how we communicate with each other is through the, the te- you know, through the telepathy of love, really, you know, it's through our hearts. That's how we communicate. Then we have an opportunity to come here and experience a physical form. Well, how when we come down to here, how we experience this um, is we have to adapt to be able to live within this physical form. Mm-hmm. And um, and then what happens is, is, is that as long as we stay within the purity of love within our hearts and don't allow um, this world to be able to draw that away from us and, and fill it with negativity, then what will happen is, is, is the purity is still there. And it's still being able to be compatible with the love that comes from the spirit. So hence, that's when communication can take place. So really, as you walk through your life, as long as you keep the heart completely filled with love, then the spirit world will be able to come around you within their awareness and and maybe able to make that communication with you as well. But if you're going to sit with demands and needs, then, you know, you can't demand from that from a natural occurrence. It's like saying to the rain. When it starts raining, rain harder. Well, it can't. It will only do what it needs to do because it's a natural occurrence. And that's what happens with a mediumship. It's a natural occurrence between two spiritual beings. But what they have to do is they just have to remove the physicality in order so that that communication can make uh, make contact because the spirit world run on a, a different vibrational level to this world. You know, we run on a more slower vibration. The spirit world work within a more faster vibration. Uh, so then what has to happen there is, is, is that at some point that communication needs to take place. Well, we can't remove a vibration because you can't destroy an energy. So what has to happen is at some point there has to be that compatibility. And when we raise our vibration, as we raise our love and our awareness, then the spirit world can do that because they're there. It's us that has to work quite hard as well. They do their bit as well. But, you know, we have to be able to raise towards their their vibration as well. But when that love is there, that's what conquers all. And that's where you get your communication. It's beautiful. You know, you can't when you've done a communication, you cannot explain to anybody the feeling, the emotion, you know, that when it right rises within the soul. And as that communication comes forward and you know that you're being able to bring forward that healing for the person that's sitting in front of you and bringing the love and the essence of what they used to feel from their loved one in the spirit world. And you're, uh, you're bringing that forward for them. That is beautiful. You can't, there's nothing that can buy it. There's nothing. It's of such an unnatural ability, but it's all done in the purity of love. It's mm. wonderful. It yeah. really, really is. That experience I had it was just like the tip of the iceberg. I'm thinking it, it was, it, the love was fantastic. And then just mm. trusting that, my life is like all of us. It, there is an unfoldment happening. Don't rush mm-hmm. it. It's like building a, a relationship. You know, yeah. you don't just start off having a you know, friendship for life. I mean, it takes some time to get used yeah. to someone and things like that. But it's just left me so inspired. 
mm. and awestruck, and I thought, oh my gosh. Oh. Because the spirit world touched your heart. Yes. Once they touch your heart, it's something that will never be removed. It will never go away because you've had that experience of that beautiful love from the other world come close to you and touch within your heart as well. And that is, that is beautiful. That really, really is. And, you know, and as I said to you before, you know, when you do that communication and, and you really feel the power of that love coming forward to the person that's sitting in front of you, that's unbelievable. That really, really is, you know, and, uh, and, and, and for me to be able to deliver that or just be the vessel, so to speak, but be able to bring that forward for them, um, is just it's priceless. It really, really is. And, you know, and I'm so grateful. It's unbelievable. Um, these right. words can't explain the, the, the gratitude to the spirit world to be allowing me or maybe not allowing me. That's probably the wrong word to use, but, for us both to be working together and, and giving me the opportunity to work with them is, is for me, it's just, it's astonishing. It really, really is. Well, one would guess that a lot of people that come to you as clients are people that are experiencing grief. Yes. And to get confirmation that their loved one is still around. I know personally, because I have experienced grief, there's nothing yeah. like it. And we're going to miss the people's bodies and their flesh. Mm -hmm. um, but to know that their soul carries on and carries on around us. I'll tell you a little story, Sandra. Mm -hmm. In my in my centre, um, what we what we do. I'll just describe the centre um, for you first before I get into this uh, little story that I'll unfold for you. The centre is there. It was started. We started it eight years ago, um, and um, the little centre is it's just a haven of love. That's exactly what it is. It's just a little light which shines very brightly amongst very very much of everybody's darkest days it really really Aww. does i'll have to come um, visit i love haven of love sounds great oh it, honestly it really really is it's beautiful it's just you know, it's been made um it hasn't come from uh, because it's all it's all done you know we don't get paid for it or nothing it's just it's all done from the love of the heart um for whatever money we do take there through the evenings it obviously just goes to pay for the rental um and 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 any little bits and pieces for advertising but actually don't get paid for it at all never have done and, and never want to uh because you know um it's it, it can work without that it works without it so for me um the center was started and um the whole purpose of it was was to try and bring um some some type of healing to people um that loved ones and the spirit world does exist but how do they believe it or how do they have some kind of knowledge of it if it doesn't if it's not on their doorstep and they can't be able to see it or hear it or read it. So it was it was decided to sit, put a little center there. And uh, what we would do is we would have mediumship evenings where various mediums would come forward and bring the voice of spirit. So what actually started to happen was that people had an interest in it and people would come there and say, well, we didn't really believe in it. But then how does a medium stand up and give us that type of information about somebody that don't even they don't even know us? We we we've you know, we live quite a way away. They won't have a clue about who we are and they certainly wouldn't have known Nan or Granddad or Mum or Dad. So how do they know that? So then what happens is is they the spirit world drop that little petal of faith within their heart so that they can just move forward gently within their life, knowing that there is some kind of something, as they call it, there. And then as they start to come forward even more within the center, then what that does is that just starts to reinforce the truth that there is another world. And as the communication comes forward even more, the evidence comes forward, then that's what really starts to be able to give them the confidence that there is another world and that, that, that life does exist. When a medium brings forward information, and if I sort of say to you that it was information that was shared only with the person that was that that, that was there at the time, um, and you know, and this can be various things that was maybe said at the moment of passing, um, and through a communication with a daughter or a son, mm -hmm. and that only they know it. When they bring that communication forward and they give them that evidence, then that's what installs within their belief that there is another world. And this story that I was going to tell you was that uh, one day we was opened up and a little man come in and he was about 80 years old and he come walking in with his little cap on and he had his little stick and he come walking in and, uh, and everyone that comes through the doors, I always welcome them straight away. And I said, yes. hello, how are you? And he said, Oh, I'm okay. I said, you haven't been here before. He said, no. And I said, well, welcome to our center. I said, obviously you understand what it's all about, don't you? And he said, well, 
I understand what you do, he said, but I don't believe in it. He said, so I'm coming here this evening, he said, because I just want to have a look. I said, fine, sit yourself down, have a lovely little seat at the front there, and uh, and please sit back and enjoy the evening. So anyway, the medium came on, and uh, and I was looking at this man, and he was taking a bit of an interest in it, but he's also his eyes was wandering everywhere else. And then all of a sudden, the medium said, can I come to you, sir? And he said, me? And she said, yes. He said, well, OK, then. So she said, I've got your wife here. And she said, and I know her name, which I can't remember the name now, but she said, I know her name was so and so. And he and I could see by his face, his face just dropped. Wow. And he went, yes. And she says and she went into a communication and it was absolutely beautiful. And she said in this communication about the holidays that they've been on and they've spent 60 or something odd years together with each other. And the tears was rolling down his face. Oh. And she was just explaining how much love that she had for him. And that she said to him, she said, you do know, she said, that you will see me again one day, don't you? And he just he couldn't even reply to the medium. He was just he kept his head there and his just his tears was dropping down. And she said, because she said, you know, she said, I'll never leave you. She said, and I promised you I would, never would leave you. She says, but at the moment, she said, you just can't see me. She says, but I will be waiting for the moment you come over to here. And when he come out of there, I said to him, are you OK? I said, because obviously it was a very emotional message for you. He said, do you know what? He said, because because of coming here this evening, he says, I can go and live the rest of my life. He says, in the way that I want to. He said, knowing that I will see the love of my life when I pass to the spirit world. He said, you don't believe what you've installed within my heart today. He says, because the information that was given, nobody could ever, ever have known it. Beautiful. He says, and I know that she is still there. He says, because also he said, do you know what? He said, my heart was pounding. He said, with the love that we used to share with each other. He says, and I was connecting in with her. He said, because we knew each other so well. He said, we understood each other so well. He says, and I knew she was there. He says, and at that point when she said to me, you can't see me, but you you can you will see me again one day. He said, I knew that I couldn't see her. He said, but I knew that I could feel her. He says, and that was my wife that was there. He says, now I can go forward, he says, and live my life knowing for the excitement that one day when I go over to the spirit world, she will be there with open arms. He says, and then we can live together again for the rest of our lives. And I thought that was beautiful. And I said to me, you know, can't wait to see you next time. He said, I don't need to come back. He oh. said, what you have gave me this evening, he said, is the faith and the truth. He said that, that, that there is another world. He yeah. says, and that was good enough for me. Thank you very much. And he walked out and I never saw him again. He never come back. But for the whole purpose of mediumship in that sense and in that way is because it's a sense of healing. It is healing. It's what it's all about. It's not bringing um uh you know stuff about the future and all that type of stuff it's it's mediumship is is about bringing communication and for the healing of the people that's here to bring back the love that they feel that has gone from them because that they can't see or feel their loved ones anymore but to bring back that connection to say i am here i haven't gone anywhere i see you i can feel you i can speak to you every day but sometimes you don't hear me but I hear every thought that comes through within your mind that you direct towards me. And I try and inspire you in many different ways within your life because my love for you is no different than what it was when I was there. You know, and, and the thing is that when people pass to the spirit world is never to forget them. Always speak about them. Bring their awareness of who they are back into into your conversations because they haven't gone anywhere. And, you know, and we can sit here as everybody does uh, in this world and say about it. And, you know, when you get to the other side, you're going to go, do you know what? That was so true. It was all so true. And it's unbelievable. It really, really is. So for the sense of our, our center is, is just to, to bring that love, the comfort and the understanding that, that, that the spirit world are still there and their loved ones are still there. Because for me, you know, I would I wouldn't like the thought to think that I would spend, say, 50 or 60 years with somebody and, and get to know them just like that, that we was just one person and to never see them again. For me, that would be quite a shocking feeling. And and, you know, and I know that you would experience that beautiful love for the 50 or 60 years. But to think then that you would never see them again um, would play different different parts in my mind it really really would so for me the thought of seeing them again and putting my arms back around them is a beautiful thought it really really is 
And that's mediumship, you know, and I think nowadays people confuse mediumship for fortune telling. And uh, fortune telling is something, obviously, that mediumship doesn't exist. It doesn't exist mm -hmm. in mediumship. It really, really doesn't. Spirit world, if they feel that they need to give you some kind of inspirational direction, they would bring it into, into a reading or into a message in some way. But they wouldn't tell you what to do because they don't interfere with the free will of your life, just like they wouldn't do it when they was here. You know, they don't change when they go over there. Um, this is your life, the pattern of your life, and you lead it how you want to. And the experiences that you choose to experience are the ones that enrich your soul for the good or for the bad. Um, and they say that lessons are to be learned here in this world. Well, I don't like to call them lessons. I like to call them an experience um, because lessons is something where you would say that I learned it. Well, yes. I don't believe you can learn every single thing. I believe that you experience different parts of life. And them experiences can then feed and, and move on to different other experiences. Uh, but, but life isn't a tick box. You can't just say, I've learned that, I've learned that, I've learned that. What you can say is, I experienced this feeling and it gave me that type of feeling. And I would know not to go near that feeling again because I didn't like what it gave me. Now, that would be of an experience. Or you can say, I, I loved it. What I felt was beautiful. And I want to have more of that. Because it's the thirst of the soul, that what the soul requires, as in the knowledge and the wisdom of what it's experienced. And that's what enriches within the soul. So that's how we sort of experience life in that way. Beautiful. I'm wondering, Darren, there's a lot of listeners to this show. And you had talked about the pedal dropping in their hearts. And I, I'm just wondering your thoughts. Let me see if I can verbalize this well. A lot of people come to this show either with a fear of death or a loved one has passed into the spirit world and they're looking for um, evidence that they survive. But they, people come in with grief and with pain and suffering. Do you think the pain and suffering can act as kind of an opening to get people to look at their own spirituality and their own life experiences and their own growth? I think, you know, um, when we say about people, uh, they look for um, the answers within, um, you know, connecting with the other, with the spirit world and things. I think most of your answers lie within your own heart. I really, really do. I think, you know, once your heart has, um, has got the love with inside of it, then I think, you know, that's where your main answer is really. You know, if you have a love for somebody and you feel that, that they have never um, moved away from you, then that's half the battle done. Um, and I think the fear of death, is, and as how people see it, I think the whole fear of death is, is how they're going to die, is one of the ways, is when people say, I don't want to die of a painful death, or no. I don't want to do this, right. I don't want to do that. So I, I, the people that I've ever spoke to and I say to them, OK, now, you know, if you had a choice to die and and you had this choice to shut your eyes and, and that was it all over, um, would you be frightened of dying? And if you opened your eyes that you was in the spirit world, they would go, well, no, because that would be the best thing that would ever happen. Right. But then you explain to them, you know, or would you like to maybe go through some type of um, illness, which would, would, would which wouldn't be very nice for you? They would go, I don't want to do that because I don't want to die like that. So I think some people, you know, what they do is they cross they cross contaminate the way of dying to the, the belief about dying. Because dying is of such a, a natural occurrence for the physical form. It really, really is. But what you've got to remember is, is the moment that your eyes close, they will reopen in the spirit world. And that's where you will be. It's just the physicality of the materialistic body is the, is the, is the, is the part that dies. And that stays here within this world because it belongs here. But the soul just goes back into, into, the, uh, into the world of spirit. Um, but I think, you know, with people, it's the fear of dying more than actually dying, because, um, you know, if we had a belief that we would uh, that being born would be scary when we was in the spirit world and we had that knowledge, then we would go, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But if we said that being born would be just that you would open your eyes and you would be in this world, you see, yeah, I'd, I'd go for that. So I think a lot of it is the fear of dying, really, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, more of than actually leaving this world. Um, you know, we don't want to leave loved ones. That's that's one thing that we don't want to do. Um, but I think if it was such of a painless experience, then, you know, I think that 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 would then people then would understand death a little bit more. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
As far as for our own unfoldment, you had mentioned sitting in the power. Could you explain that a little bit? And for us who want to continue our own unfoldment, like how could we use that as individuals in our life? Okay, sitting in the power is the most enriched part of developing your mediumship that you will ever come across. Um, now, I know that you can read books and you can have different workshops and different experiences in lots of different ways, and they will help. They will unearth the, the, the parts of the awareness that you need to unfold in that way. But the most, if you really want to become close to the spirit world and allow the spirit world to come close to you, sitting in the power for me, um, and, I, and I'm sure that a lot of mediums will certainly agree with this because I know that this is a, an aspect of how they, they, you know, how they train themselves. Um, but sitting in the power is just sitting within the silence because, you know, when you speak to the spirit world, they all say to us, um, sit within the silence, sit within the silence of you. And that's when we can start to unfold. So sitting in the power for me is if you sat 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, or even half an hour every day. And how I do it is I just sit there and I sit on a chair and I close my eyes and I say to the spirit world, here I am. I sit here with not a demand. I don't ask for communication. I ask of nothing. All I ask is that you come close to me and blend within my love and let me feel your love. And what I do is I just raise my soul to the awareness of love and then just sit there and allow the spirit world just to come close to me. And as they come close to me, I can feel them there. I can feel their presence. And the more blending that you, you take place with the, with your, um, with the this, this spirit world, the more closer they can come when the communication needs to take place. So raising your soul is what I class as sitting in the power, raising the awareness of the soul in the name of love and sitting with it open for the spirit world. And if you can do that, then your development, your unfoldment will take um, more of an enriched texture to it. It really, really will. Um, it's, it's just a beautiful part. And, it, and what it is, it's, it's that what you're doing is you're just sitting in the name of love. That's what you're doing. And, uh, and that you can't beat because love is what mediumship is built upon, the love between you and, and the spirit world. So sitting in the power really will enrich you in, in lots of different ways. And it's a practice, correct? It's not like, because I know myself a year ago, my mind was so busy all the time, thinking of the past, thinking of the future, thinking what I need to do, that it I convinced myself that there's no way I'm going to be able to quiet my mind. And a year later, I have larger and larger gaps that my mind can just be at rest. So, what you sorry, carry on. no, no, go ahead. What you've got to remember is 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 that meditation is for the mind. Okay. Meditation is there to quieten the mind and and control the mind in different ways and allow the mind to experience lots of different ways. But sitting in the power is nothing to do with the mind. Sitting in the power is what it's such of a natural ability. It's not something that we have to learn to do. It's something that's within us, and it's just something that we have to create within us to be able to. Um, make that contact and allow the spirit world to come close to us. So sitting in the power is natural. It is so natural. It's unbelievable. It's not something that you have to really train to do either. It is sitting with an open heart and an open mind and just saying to the spirit world, here I am. I'm going to just sit here and blend within the name of love and ask of nothing of you and not ask for, for, for communication at all and just sit there and just raise your soul. And how I say raise your soul is, is that you can um, how I do it is I just raise my soul up and I just push it to the awareness of where the spirit world is and the spirit world is around me. So I just push it to the awareness. And as it moves up into the awareness, it's just opening up like a flower. It's, it's just like a flower just opening up for the sun. And as it opens up and the sun would be the spirit world come down and they enrich my flower of who I am with all the nutrients and all the all the all the different ingredients that it needs in order for it to be able to sustain a different life and 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 as that enriches the flower that's what happens so it's, it's it starts to become 
it's just just a natural occurrence. It just really, really is. And people, the trouble is with it nowadays, people don't want to sit for 20 minutes or half an hour every day, or they can't because their lives are so busy. So what they do is they try and grab a workshop here or try and grab a course here. And, and, and then, you know, they can do that over the space of a couple of years. And then you hear them, they speak, they go, well, my mediumship hasn't moved forward in any way. Or, you know, because what the, what workshops and things do is they give you tools. The teachers are great. They're absolutely fantastic. And they give you the tools in order to be able to work within your mediumship but what you have to do is you have to be available within your own heart and within your own mind to be able to work within your mediumship as well and sitting in the power is what enriches that and so sitting in the power i can't say to you i can't stress enough how important it is and if you do it you'll see a massive difference you really really will honestly really really well and i think all of us want to have that feeling of love that our loved ones are around us so it can only be a good practice for us and i can't help but think about people that want to be a bodybuilder with big muscles you can't just take a workshop twice a year and have the results you have to practice Mm. Mm. you really really do really have to practice you know and and mediumship isn't you know and people explain it as like a muscle and they say the more you use it the more um you know the more better it comes and 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 and, and in certain ways you know that is the truth of it in in lots of different ways but also mediumship it's not also about using a muscle it's about you who you are as a person you know and uh, and, and where you are within your soul um, and how you see life and the positivity aspect of life as well you know mediumship is who you are um it's it's it's, it's definitely part of you you know and the communication part is when you try and switch on to make communication but other than that you don't step away from the spirituality of who you are and step into it to say make communication mediumship is you the spirituality is you and and what you're doing is that you're just allowing that unfoldment to take place so that it can be used in a more positive way within communication so mediumship is who you are uh, you know, I've never had a belief that it's something that you can just, you know, work in a supermarket and go, oh, I'm going to go and be a medium because I don't like working in here. <laughs> I, don't believe, I don't believe it can be worked in that way at all. You know, mediumship is of a life journey. It really, really is, you know, um, and we have to have that experience of life in order to be able to have uh, our souls enriched in that way and have the empathy um, within the soul that when we do a communication, you know, we can bring that emotion forward to somebody um and, and and bring the aspect of that person of how their their personality was and 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 how they were as a person and that becomes from your life experiences um and and that's what then makes the communication beautiful that's great um and i think i know actually i mean we're just souls having a human experience right now so we have the tools we just have to unfold them or you know sit yeah. to unfold them and can you speak a little bit about um is it sitting in the power or sitting in our own quietness that like we we know our answers the you said answers lie within our own heart but there's times that there's some troubled times in fact in most of our lives and i think it's natural for all us to think that the answers lie somewhere beyond or you know someone else has the answer would you recommend sitting in the power or just sitting quietly to find our own answers i believe that um you know all your answers never come from anybody else they all come from within you you know your answers are there we just sometimes don't tap into them to find them because we look for the more easier choice of saying you know is this going wrong or is that going wrong or shall i do this shall i do that you know we have this intuition that's built within us because that's who we are and you know all our answers lie within there That's everything that we need to know about us as a person lies within there. Nobody else can tell us who we are. Nobody can say you're this type of person, that type of person. You know who you are, but you just have to unscrape away and and, and find the person that you are. And, and, And doing that, again, comes from knowing who you are and loving you as a person because you can never love anybody until you love yourself. Now, once you start to love yourself, then you know who you are and what you want within your life as well. And uh, and then as that starts to move forward, uh, you get this sense of um, you get this sense that what you're doing is correct or what you're doing or what you want would be correct. So you're not sitting there with these blank expressions and as if to say, like, I don't know what to do in my life, you know, because 
all the answers are with inside. They really, really are. You just have to allow them to unfold in, in whatever situations that you're coming in. But sitting in the power, sitting in the silence, becoming at one with who you are is where you will start to unfold that. And uh, and, and that's, that's, you know, then again, it's all natural occurrences. There's nothing here uh, within this world or within the spirit world that manifests from man-made ways. It's all natural. And it's an ability that everybody has. And it's just tapping into it to find out who you are and what you are as a person. And that comes within within the soul. But as long as your heart is open, full of love, then that will walk you through this world in, in many ways anyway. And I'm so grateful to learn this because just a year ago or two years ago, there was not much self-love going on within Sandra. And it's so easy for people to say, oh, you're great. You do so much. You it should be mm. easy to love yourself. And it's like, I think all of us, you know, we live in our own skin. There's this ego mind that can often be such a nasty little critic, never being good enough and all that. And I have found, not that I sit in the power every day, but I do try to make a practice of it more so than I had in the past. But this feeling of self-love really has developed. And I've been able to look at myself from an outside point of view and just go, yeah, she's not bad, that girl, you know, and yeah. it's it's fun. And in that, I've developed all kinds of friendships and really, really good, strong, loving feelings with people. And But it is, it's my own unfoldment. So it, although I was asking for it many years ago, I wasn't willing to do anything for it. And, um, and, and by just simply quieting my mind and sitting in the stillness and having the intention to blend with the spirit world. I, I've just noticed with myself a whole new a new way of living. And I thought if I can start feeling this love for myself and also the love coming from the spirit world, there's a way that I can share that other people can have the same. Because there's nothing like it. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And I know in life as well that, you know, partners and, and marriages and, and relationships and all that type of stuff as well, they, they, they can strip us down. And, and they can take away our self-worth in lots of different ways just because of, of you know, how it, how it is. Um, but I think, you know, if you retain that love with inside of you, um, then that's that's where your strength is. That's where your abilities are. Um, and you can then forgive. You can forget. Um, you can move forward. You can learn to love again. You can do all sorts of different aspects. But that has to come from within. Now, when people beat us down, then that strips us away and that hides away. So we don't get to see that beautiful facet of ourselves, who we are. Um, and then again, that takes another part of our journey of life in, in order for that to unfold and develop again. And like you say, you know, maybe a year or so ago that you didn't feel that so much within yourself. But nowadays you feel a lot more positive and that you love yourself more because the unfoldment of your journey within the last year has allowed your soul to be able to express itself in such a way that it knows and understands and identifies that you are a beautiful person. You really, really are. And it's not that people tell you it. It's because you feel it, because you feel the love with inside. Sitting in the silence, sitting within the power allows you to tap into that part of you. And what it's doing is it's allowing your soul to speak to you because that's where your everything that, re, that, that is you is in the soul. And it allows that to start to speak to you. And as it speaks to you, you don't hear it in a sense of words, but you say, you hear it in a, in a sense of feelings. Mm -hmm. And and then it starts to enrich you within within your own soul. And that's when you start to become the person who you know you are. And, uh, and, 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 and that's where the strength starts to come. Now, when that does come in that aspect, then the spirit world... Because you're such in, in a good place within yourself as well and that the, the love is there and that you're creating the love with inside of you, the spirit world then can come and blend within there as well. And then hence where the communication will start to take place and development then starts to move forward. And that's why um, last week um, you had that experience of communication from the spirit world where probably a year ago when you didn't feel so good within yourself, you may not have had that type of experience. But because the love's been installed inside of you, then what's happening is that you've got the compatibility of two loves meeting together. And then it's just so natural for that communication to take place. And you've done that yourself and you've achieved it yourself. Nobody's done that for you. So all your answers, again, lie with inside. And that is sitting silently within the power and allowing your soul to come to the surface to speak to you. Beautiful.
Darren, is there an aspect of um, your development that you're really passionate about right now? Like, for instance, everything I'm doing, I find myself really interested in physical and trance mediumship. I mean, that's just my own secret studies right now. Is there something that you're really passionate about or you're learning now? Or um... I love physical. I've always had a massive interest in physical mediumship. For me, um, you know, it's not it's not the phenomena and it for me it's it's that extra mile that it goes to bring through direct communication um where you can have that um existence of the soul coming so much closer to us and so that we can experience that in many different ways so for me physical mediumship really sort of knocks on my door and uh and i do have a a real interest in it because mental mediumship is beautiful in such a way that it brings so much goodness and healing to people but to actually be able to speak to your loved one through direct voice is absolutely outstanding it is the closeness of the two worlds as they meet together and that communication takes place and that is just through the heart and the love of a medium is absolutely it's astounding it really really is you can't get any closer you know the finest of the wave of the two worlds as they really come together in that in that way and and allow for that communication to come forward is phenomenal materialization that is just out of this world you know i have seen um a, a small amount of a materialization um not in a in a, in a physical form but it was in a, a of a different type of form um, but I have seen that. Um, and, and, and for me, you know, that that like punched me in the heart. It really, really did. Because for me, it was like, oh, my good God, I cannot believe that it's, you know, the, the closeness that the spirit world can come to this world and, and, and bring their evidence that they're there is just astounding. And it makes you want to say to people, look, listen, I've seen it. I know it's there. I've heard a loved one come forward and and speak. And, and have a conversation with their with their loved one in, in the same room. And it's like everybody that doesn't believe about the spirit world, please go and see a seance. That's what I feel like saying to them, because you will have your own proof of that direct voice. And, you know, when you can ask your gran or your mum or your dad questions and they speak to you and tell you that they're all right and that Uncle Billy's here and Auntie Jean's there and and then you can say to them, are you all right? And they they voice back their opinion, say, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. And how are the children when they can communicate back with this world? I don't believe that there should be any shadow of a doubt in certain ways that the spirit world doesn't exist. But again, it's, you know, it's, it's up to everybody's individual choice on, on what they believe. And there has to be balance in the world because you have to sit with an open heart and an open mind. But for me, when I hear that and experience that, it's just like, well, what did, what did you see, Darren? Can I ask? I saw a, a hand. I saw a hand um, from a physical medium and um, I saw the hand and it was just manifesting and, uh, and I saw it come through on ectoplasm. So um, I saw this hand and it was absolutely beautiful. It really, really was. I was about three rows back um, and I saw it as I was as I stood up. I could see it. And as the hand come forward, it was just absolutely beautiful. But I've sat in many seances with um, with some um, fantastic mediums, Mm -hmm. uh, physical Mm -hmm. mediums. And um, and, you know, what I've witnessed myself, um, I can take that with me in my heart forever because it's been absolutely beautiful. It really, really has. You know, and I've heard and I felt little spirit children, you know, sort of touch me. And and I've and I've I've been able to I've been so lucky to witness that. It's been unbelievable. It really, really has. And I've heard them running around the room and, and I've heard them unwrapping presents and doing all sorts of different um, stuff. But it's in playing musical instruments and, and even squirting water pistols at I you. Know, you know? I know, yeah. That, for me, that is just unbelievable. But, you know, and I get shivery now when I speak about it because, you know, that is, it, you know, that is the love that the two worlds can connect yes. with. And, and it's just so beautiful. It really, really is. There's no, there's nothing in this world that can ever go anywhere near it. There really, really isn't. You know, if, if, if we were stripped of every single thing in our life, but we only had one choice to go and see a, a seance, I would go and see the seance and experience that once more. You know, for me, when I hear somebody talk through a direct voice and speak to somebody else in the room and, and for them to go home and have their heart filled with the love of their loved one is just, for me, it's just, Honestly, it's it's heart touching. It really, really is. Mm-hmm. So you know, and I know that physical mediums dedicate their life to it, and yes. I know that. 
it is of a dedication. It really, really is. It's not something that you just dip in and dip out. It's of a lifelong dedication. And, you know, and, you know, if we didn't have them, then, you know, we wouldn't have that type of communication and and that type of love that's been created in them rooms. So, you know, my heart goes out to the physical mediums for, for what they do and the dedication they do. And yes. and I know that they get stripped down by all these other people saying about this, that and the other. But, you know, when you've actually witnessed a, a pure, um, truthful, loving physical medium, then all that stuff that they talk about it doesn't it doesn't even come into it you know it's just it's a waste of your eyes looking at the words because it means absolutely nothing if you want the proof it will be in your heart your heart tells you you know yeah. and last week um banyan retreat is a place that one can witness these seances and yeah. there was a bunch of the listeners of this show that met me over there just because they'd heard my interviews with scott milligan and just with nick um, from Banyan and yeah. it sounds so spectacular and crazy at the same time that these things could happen but they had that feeling like I must go I must experience this and yeah. all of their lives were transformed you know even one fellow was a scientist he says I just can't get my head around this but yeah. it's changed my life and so yeah. I'm I'm with you I think it's fascinating and right now um, I, I think they're there could be many physical mediums on planet Earth, but I think they're in home circle. They're not out in the public eye. There's only a couple that are out in the public eye. But I feel so passionate that I love to share and 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 have this again in the world for people to experience on more of a global mm. scale. So mm. I, I've been doing some reading lately and – my listeners know this, that uh, the fellows, the Wright brothers that invented the airplane were ridiculed about it, and it'll never happen. I found out that uh, Thomas Edison was ridiculed for his idea of the light bulb, um, even the radio, uh, Alexander Graham Bell with the telephone, ridiculed, mm. never catch on, you know, and I think the world of physical mediumship seems so extraordinary, even to me, who's experienced it many times, like, it's hard to yeah. believe I've witnessed what I've witnessed, but I yeah. think, you know, in time, we, we're now at the, like a, I think the tipping point will occur that people will be interested in this and maybe even start in home, home circles, start them themselves and just see what's possible when we develop this relationship with the spirit world. So I'm excited about the future. I am. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And like you say, you know, um, I didn't want to mention the name of the physical medium earlier, but um, you know, what I have to say is, is that, you know, when I've sat in the Banyan, because that's where I go and I witness yes. a, a lot of these seances and it is with Scott Milligan. Yes. Um, and and uh, that man is absolutely second to none, um, a fantastic medium. He really is. And I've known Scott for quite a few years now. And um, and I've, I've watched him as his, his dedication and the love that he has for the spirit world. And, you, you know, you cannot say anything against that man at all, you know. And the only people that do are the ones that's jealous because they want to be where he is within his development. But, right. you know, what they've got to remember is that Scott sat for many many years, years i believe it's 20 years 20 he years. sat every single week in so many different conditions and dedicated his heart to the spirit world and the spirit world are now beginning to unfold his development in such a beautiful way because they've seen the dedication that he gave you know and you know scott doesn't do it for money he does it for love he yes. really really does but there's lots of physical mediums out there that go well i'll tell you what let me try and do that and oh look i can throw something on the floor and it makes it sound like someone's over there and that will be a few quid for this and a few quid for that it doesn't work like that it really really doesn't if you're prepared to sit in in a dedication and and, and open your heart up to the spirit world for 20 years then you know that's when the spirit world see it and they say yes you know, we've seen your commitment, we've seen your dedication, and we can really work with you in that way, you know, because your heart is full of love, and, and that's what we are. And so what they do is they then be able to bring that communication forward for, for everyone that's here, because what you've got to remember is, is a physical medium and a mental medium, you know, they don't have to do these things. No. You know, they do it through their choice of, through their heart, through their love for the spirit and for the people that they're doing it for and the sense of healing for everybody that they see, you know, and, and, and touch in, in that way. You know, they do it through their choice of love and, and that's why they do it, you know. So um, when people start to ridicule mediums and say, oh, they're fake, they're this, they're this, that and the other, you know, your day will come when you will have that belief within it. 
when your time is right and it's, it's your turn to be able to put forward and have that type of belief in mediumship because your day of healing will come, then you'll start to have that little bit of belief within it as well because there's nothing better than being able to have your loved one draw close to you and be able to communicate with you in that way. There's nothing better than it. There really, really isn't. So for me, um, it's, it's just a sort of a dedication. It really, really is, um, especially within physical mediumship because, you know, physical mediumship is very demanding in lots of different aspects. It really, really is. Um, and if you're willing to allow that type of um, commitment to, uh, to to work within you in your in your life, then you know that's a dedication that really really is. And uh, and Scott does it just through the heart. Doesn't he really he? really yes. does. He just does it because he wants them people to sit in that room and have that experience of their loved ones. That's what he wants. And uh, and and to me, that's absolutely beautiful. And I'm sure that Scott, if he listened to this, wouldn't mind me saying these things um, because no. it's the only is it's the truth about him and about his his mediumship. Um, and you know, and, and and you you can't move away from that. You know, the truth is there. It's 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 written within within his own heart. It really really is. So physical mediumship is where I have an interest in it as well. I like trance. Trance is uh, very much so. Um, uh, it's beautiful. There's a you know, there's a massive dedication that needs to come within trance as well. So for me, I don't sort of. Um, I don't shut myself down to a specific type of mediumship because I'm open to try all of it and, and, and see where if there's any ability in all of it for me. And uh, and then I know that working within the spirit world and working within my own heart, then we will then find a certain path that they feel that may be where my strengths would be or my best dedication or abilities would be. And then we would sort of maybe channel off in that way. So for me, I like to have all aspects of it. I really, really do. But physical is where I do, you know, it really sort of, it flicks my switch in my heart. It really, really does. My switch is flicked too. Absolutely. Yep. Nothing Definitely. like it. Nothing like it. And for our listener, um, I've interviewed Scott Milligan a few times on this show, but you can go to his website, scottmilligan.net or banyanretreat.com, just if you're interested in finding out about these seances. Pretty exciting. Darren, uh, can people contact you to get a medium reading? And if, or are you just at your center or is it something you do on the phone or skype or anything well i can do a skype for them um because i prefer to see people and speak to them in that way you know um because i know that the, the spirit world take any opportunity they can in order to bring communication forward you know i know that some mediums say oh you can't do it on phones and well for me i believe that because you're connected energetically within spiritual beings that everything's all possible. It really, really is. Yeah. Um, and I know that the spirit world, they're, they, you know, they're, they're moving forward with modern technology with us as well. And they're learning on the other side as well to be able to use what we have available to us. And one of them is Skype. And so I know that they're using, um, they're being able to use this t- sort of modern technology in that way. And we just connect in within that as well. So Skype readings is absolutely fine to do that. Um, and telephone readings are okay for me. Uh, but I prefer to see the person. I really, really do, because then I start to be able to work really greatly within their energy. So they can do that. Um, I don't have a website because um, it's not something that I have really bothered with, to be perfectly honest with you, because I have the center. So anyone can contact me through the center. Um, but I do do shows um, here, there and everywhere as well. Um, so that's another outlet that I do to uh, to bring the voice of the spirit across to everybody, um, because, you know, how I see things is the spirit world, as I said, take each opportunity. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to spread um, themselves all over the place in order so that, that, that their voice can be heard in many ways so that they can touch the hearts that they need to. Because spiritualism, mediumship very many years ago was very much isolated in lots of different ways. But nowadays, they're trying to spread themselves right across the whole world right. um, and in, in order so that they can bring this communication to, to every heart that, that they need to, you know, so that they can say to people, listen, we are only a thought away. We are a voice away. That's all we are. We're not in a different world that you can't, you know, you'll never get to. We are just literally a voice away. And, uh, and they're trying to spread that type of communication to everybody that's here. And the intelligence of it is unbelievable. So if anyone wanted to contact me, then they can contact me through Barnum Spiritual Center. Um, there is a message box on there. So if you wanted to message me, then I would certainly get back to you and, uh, and be able to do, um, a reading for you in that, in that way. Um, and it, you know, we do lots of, um, different types of um, uh, counseling, grief counseling, 
um, and, and, and spiritual grief counseling where, you know, if you've lost somebody and you just want to talk to us, then absolutely fine. Press the button, send message, give me a message and, uh, and then we will contact with you. And, uh, and if you just want to talk to us because you've lost somebody and you just want somebody to, uh, to listen to you, then absolutely fine. You can call. Um, you know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm sat there with an open ear all the time. So if you just wanted to explain how you feel because you've lost somebody, um, then please do so. You know, it, it's, if I can help you in any way, then I will do, um, because th that's, that's what we're all about. We're all here to make each and every one of our journeys much more easier in order to experience this world before we go back home to spirit. So, uh, yeah, absolutely no oh, problem at all. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing. Fantastic. Oh, but, you know, the center, if it's, it's on Facebook. So if you go on there and look under Barnum Spiritual mm -hmm. Center, um, you'll see it. And we have our events on there as well. Okay. And uh, we have little, I put on there every day, inspirational um, words that come from spirit and also from my own heart. So I put them on there as well, Excellent. just for people to follow and read. Um, but always remember that you're never alone. And I know that when we lose loved ones, we do feel that sense that we are on our own and, and, and that we haven't got anyone around us. And some people haven't. But there's that little blue button on Facebook where it says send message. Press that and you can come and contact me and, uh, and, and we can have a little chat about it. We That's really, really great. Can. And, for our and, listener, if, I, and if I can help you in any way, then I will do. Oh, that's great. For our listener, in the description of this episode, I have a link that you can press to go to Facebook to the Barnum Spiritual Center. So make it easy for you. Darren, this has been wonderful. I'm so glad we connected this way. Oh, it's lovely talking to you anyway. I really enjoy yeah. talking to you. I love your personality and I love your energy. Um, you know, with, with you, every time I see you, and like you said earlier, be about the smile, but you've always got that smile on your face. You too. You really, really have. Honestly, you have. And it's like, you know, within the darkest of hours of, of many people's lives, if they come and see you, that you would shed that little bit of light on their life. You really, really would mm -hmm. because you, you know, you've got a beautiful personality, Sandra. You really, really have. And I know we only see each other because of the distance. Um, but every time we see, it's like as if we, we don't not talk. Do you see what I mean? It's just, it's beautiful. It really, really is. And what you're doing, I must say what you're doing for, for bringing the voice of the spirit world to where you live in the world is absolutely fascinating. It really is. What you're doing is brilliant. Honestly, it really, really is. And without you, you know, the, the spirit world cannot contact where they need to. So what you're doing is a really, really good job. And and the healing that you're bringing to people because of what you're doing is phenomenal. It really is. And they may not feel it today, but they may feel it next week or six months or a year's time. But the healing that you're doing for them is brilliant. So, you know, and I know that the spirit world are, are just saying thank you for everything that you do oh. because... Uh, it's brilliant. It really, really is. You're you're one of them channels that the spirit world um, are having the availability to be able to use to bring loved ones back to this world for communication, to let everybody know that the, the story of it is, is that, that, no, you don't die. And I you love it. I love you doing this. You can't die because the, you know, life is of eternal. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's an energy. You know, when you look at an energy, an energy cannot die. You can't destroy it. It's like the wind. You know, if you look outside, you you can run through it all day long. You'll never destroy it. You'll never move it. It won't do anything because it's of an energy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the same as what we are as spiritual beings. You know, we're of an energy um, incarnated into this um, beautiful physical existence until such times as, um, you know, our physical existence says, hey, ho, I've had enough. And, uh, and then we go back home to the spirit world. But when we go back, we take away all them beautiful experiences and memories that we've, you know, it, it created while we've been here which then enriches our soul so that we can then move forward within our own progression of our own soul, and especially within the realms of the spirit world. So well done, Sandra, for oh, what you're doing. Thanks. And just one last quick thing. It's good to go after more and new experiences then, right? Yeah, very much so. I believe that you should never limit yourself to nothing in this world uh, because every experience is of an enrichment of your own soul. It really, really is. And every experience is of a memory. So you'll always carry that memory with you. So uh, I believe that you should try every single thing that you want to in this world. Uh, live this world in the best possible way that you can, because, you know, when we do go back home, we can't say, oh, 
I wish I'd done this or I wish I'd done that. If it's feasible and it's accessible for you to do it, then take up every opportunity to experience it. Because I've done lots of things in my life and I've experienced lots of things and I would never turn back the clock at all. Um, and I would never change any of it because the experiences I've had have made the person who I am today. And, uh, and, and that is priceless. It really, really is. And that's called experiencing the physical world. That's right. Oh, Darren, thank you for being our guest today. You're Yay. welcome. Thank you very much um, for inviting me. And uh, and what time is it over there? Uh, it is 9.18 a.m. Oh. Early. Oh, we it's have early. five hours yeah. between us, so I woke up early for this call. Oh, yes, well done. Did. Well, actually, I didn't wake up too early because I have a little bit of jet lag, so my body still thinks I'm in the U.K., so I was up. Early. Well, we've got a sunny day here today, so uh, the sun is shining, and uh, Mother Nature is blessing us with her presence of beautiful spring weather, oh. so we're quite lucky here today because we haven't had good weather, and I don't think you experienced it good no. last week when you were here. So we've got a lovely day here today, so it's beautiful, and again for today, thank you to um, for you to give in the spirit world their opportunity to bring their voice across to us today as well, because, uh, you know, without your... Um, availability of, of of letting them do it again you know what you're doing is you're shedding light uh very much so on a, on a darkened door at some yes. point in life so well done thank you for that and for our listener thank you for spending this hour with darren hart and i i it's been value to me and that's when i feel it's maybe a value to you value to you too as a reminder our home base for all these episodes is we don't die radio.com now 200 and some episodes that you can play on itunes or youtube or several uh, several other ways you can sign up for what i call the insiders club and receive my 19 reasons i believe in the afterlife report and um, a free read of my book we don't die as well as an audio called how to survive grief i will be speaking this coming september at the afterlife symposium in scottsdale arizona along with many other people it's a big 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 conference and i think you'd meet a lot of like-minded friends and have a great time but you can check out afterlife symposium.org to find out more and to register register. But in closing, I want to say thank you. My name is Sandra Champlain. And as always, I'm so happy to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So I really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. (music) 